All right, students, mitosis versus meiosis, uh, the two important cell division types. Let's take a look at the cell cycle. Here we have uh, a drawing you want to use for your drawing. And here we have, uh, <clears throat> we have interphase, which is uh, where the cell spends 99% of its time in. And interphase is really three phases, G1, S, and G2. And then we also have M phase, which is made up of mitosis, or it could be meiosis and cytokinesis. Um, so a quick review of that. So in interphase, the first part is G1, and it's, the cell is just growing, so think of G as uh, grow. And the, gr and the cell is just growing and getting bigger. And in interphase, uh, S phase, is when the DNA is d duplicated or synthesized. So the DNA is copied, uh, also called replication, as you guys know later on. And that's the chromosomes are duplicated. Then you have G2. The, the cell is going to grow a little bit more, and it's going to prepare for di uh, cell division. A lot of the organelles are going to duplicate. You're going to have to double the amount of, of mitochondria, Golgi, and all those structures so that the new cell can have all those materials too. And then you have, after interphase and the cell's ready to go, you begin mitosis. Now I'm going to talk about this little point here called GO or G0. G0 is uh, some cells are arrested. In other words, they're stopped and they, they stay in this uh, state called G0 state. Cells that won't continue to divide. And these include things like nerve cells. Um, once you have um, at age 12 or whenever you, uh, at a certain age actually, and uh, you won't, the cells won't be, uh, they won't go through cell division anymore. So you'll have all the nerve cells you'll have at a certain point. And because they don't continue in the cell cycle. Now, wouldn't that be cool to figure out how we can get them back in? But anyway, um, so now you go into mitosis and you have PMAT. A way to remember it is uh, PMAT or Paco Meta Taco. That's how I taught you guys. So again, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. And all this is nuclear division. So don't, don't forget, mitosis and meiosis is part of cell division, but it's not cell division. It's nuclear division. And then the cytoplasm divides and actually in cytokinesis. Cytoplasm division is cytokinesis now. And you'll end up with two cells. The cell division purpose. So mitosis is really to create body cells, also called somatic cells. The way to remember that is think my toe. Point to your toe and it reminds you, oh, mitosis, so it's a body cell. I'm making body cells. And we also have meiosis, which makes uh, gamete cells. So remember, the way to way to remember that is think uh, sperm and egg made me. So meiosis is making sex cells, also called gamete cells. And why do we need mitosis? Well, we need it to grow. So we get bigger by adding more cells to our body, identical cells. And when you get a cut or a bruise or do we do it also to replace cells, to repair and replace um, dead cells or injured cells or old cells? Also to develop. That's how we go from a zygote um, to a fully developed organism. And also meiosis. Now looking at meiosis is to create the sperm and egg. Why do you want that? Well, because it's for the prop process of reproduction. And meiosis is very important because not only does it help us make offspring, but it ensures that every offspring is different to ensure variety, which is something very important we're learning in biology, that variety is a good thing. It helps us overcome many new changes in environments because we'll have some varieties that can survive those changes. And here's just a quick um, picture showing you how mitosis and meiosis uh, go hand in hand. Uh, first, when you, we could start with the parents. At a certain age, um, let's say puberty hits, then they'll be able to do meiosis. That's when you actually start performing meiosis because then you make sex cells, sperm and egg. So the guy will make the sperm and mom will make the egg. Remember, meiosis happens in certain cells. In the females, it's the uh, ovaries. And in the males, it's the testes. And they go through meiosis. And so at first, their body cells are actually uh, diploid. But when they go through meiosis, they make their sex cells haploid. So they don't put 46 chromosomes. They put half, 23 and 23. 23 into the egg, 23 going into sperm. So those are haploid, only one set. And then the sperm and the egg unite in the process of uh, fertilization. And then you bring back that number again, that diploid number. 
And so you come back with 46. And this is the zygote, the very first cell. I call it cell number one of your entire body. And then that cell goes through mitosis. It divides and it divides until you have a, a baby. And then those cells start to differentiate, but they're still, they still have the same DNA. Don't forget that. They have the same DNA, but they start turning into different cells. And that's because certain genes turn on. Remember, that's called gene expression. Now you have that baby. It's going to, again, um, divide more in, uh, through mitosis until it becomes an adult. And then meiosis starts, right? Now, meiosis in male and females um, is very different. Uh, same process, but in males, it leads to four sperm. And in females, you would think you'd get uh, four eggs, but actually three of the soon-to-be eggs, or what would have been eggs, actually end up being polar bodies. They die. But you notice why they die is they don't have all the cytoplasm as one of them does. So they kind of sacrifice their cytoplasm and cell machinery to give it to this one um, cell. And then that one's going to be the egg cell. So you actually want that cell to be very big in comparison to the sperm because that egg cell is going to have all the necessary material, ribosomes, Golgi, ER, mitochondria, all those structures to help it develop into a, a fetus. So that's the starting cell. We need that to be big. So half of your DNA comes from mom and half of it comes from dad. And remember, mom and dad's, um, the sperm and the egg, they were haploid. But when they combined to fertilize and to make you, your first cell, the zygote, they combined to make 2N, which means diploid. That means there's two sets of DNA. Now we're looking over here, and this is again a chromosome. You have a centromere, which is a protein disc that can that uh, holds these two, these two chromatids together. Chromatids are identical copies. Remember, you have one, and then in replication, you get another molecule. And then genes are segments of DNA that code for a protein or a trait. And here we have homologous chromosomes. Again, chromosomes that have the same size, shape, they care they have same banding patterns and they also carry the same genes and here's another homologous pair right there all right students now we're at mitosis versus meiosis use this picture for your drawing here we have interphase you can't really see the chromosomes they're in chromatin form but as prophase starts the chromatin condenses and now we see chromosomes um, and then the nuclear membrane also disappears so that the spindle fibers can come in and attach to the chromosomes and then in metaphase they line up on the equatorial plate or in the middle and they line up single file that's important to remember and why is that important is because we want to split them evenly we want to take this chromatid over here that one to that side so that both cells can have the same stuff and that's exactly what happens in anaphase the chromatids separate so the chromatids um, actually separated apart and then in they go to opposite sides and then in telophase you actually have both of them in opposite sides and the new nucleus starts to reform again the nuclear membrane starts reforming and you can see you have everything you have um, that you end up diploid again um, just as you started with and again you can see one big chromosome from mom one big one from dad a small one from dad and a small one from mom so you have the same stuff here as you have here two identical cells so if we would have started with 46, you'd have 46 here and 46 there. You keep everything the same. Again, you want identical cells. Um, and you start diploid and you end up diploid. And you also just get two cells. Now let's compare with meiosis. Same thing. Um, again, in interphase, it's, you can't really see it. And the chromatin or the chromosomes start forming in um, prophase. But now it's really important to remember that. All the magic happens in meiosis part one. Remember that. Here's where you have crossing over, independent assortment, the law of segregation, all these important steps that give variety to our sperm and egg. And let's start with the first one, prophase one. Here, the chromosomes or the homologous chromosomes pair up and then they cross over. So they exchange DNA. So pieces of mom's DNA goes on to dad's and vice versa. And so you get all these thousands of combinations, millions of combinations that can exist by all this exchange of DNA material. Now that doesn't happen here in prophase of mitosis, just remember that. Here the chromosomes are all over the place, they're not really paired up. Here they are and they do all that. 
Again, the nuclear membrane uh, disappears. The spindle fibers start to form. That's characteristic of prophase. And then in metaphase one, you have the law of independent assortment. And again, that law just says that the chromosomes line up in pairs, and the chromosomes can line up independently of how they line up with these other chromosomes. So in this case, I have the blue on the on this side and the red on that side. And just by chance, the red one's on this side and the blue one's on that side. But they could have switched around. Maybe this blue one could have been on this side and the red one could have been on that side. Again, that's the law of independent assortment. You could have all these combinations, random lining up, and whatever these do is independent of whatever these do. Just remember that idea. And so you can get a lot of, of options on how they line up and therefore a lot of different uh, combinations of sex cells. And then you have the law of segregation in, in anaphase 1. And that's when the chromosomes, the homologous chromosomes, separate. So they separate into opposite cells carrying their um, specific alleles that they have. And so they separate. And, and this is very important because here we had uh, a cell that was diploid. Again, two of each kind, right? Two of these big ones, two of these small ones. But now look what happens. After you separate, you're you're only going to have one of each kind. One big one, or sorry, one big one and one small one. One big one and small one. So now you have one of each. So you went from diploid to haploid. And the rest of it is occurs just like just like mitosis, regular mitosis. Again, the chromosomes are going to line up in the middle, single file this time, just like mitosis. And the chromatids are going to separate this time, not the chromosomes, like in meiosis 1. And then you're going to end up with four cells this time. And each cell genetically different. Why? Because of these amazing steps crossing over independent assortment and segregation. Um, the cells are also going to be half the chromosome number. Here you started with four. One, two, three, four. Let's look at it now. One, two in each. So the chromosome number got cut in half. That's important because the sperm cells have to be half because they come together to make uh, the original um, diploid number again later on in fertilization. And a quick comparison of mitosis versus meiosis. Remember that the chromosomes line up in single file in mitosis, but in meiosis, part one, they line up double file. In other words, the hom homologous chromosomes line up, and then they separate, and that's where you get the diploid, haploid, and chromosome number being cut by half, which is important for cells of sex cell form.